I'm going to introduce my and our first presenter, Lyndon Frederick. He's lived in Maine since 1989 and is a full-time artist. Last year, he built a new house in Belfast. And in his spare time, he pursues his secret passion, which we'll learn about right now. He previously presented in 2009. Please welcome Lyndon. Welcome, everyone. You do realize that uh, the Jeopardy Tournament of Champions is starting? <laughs> if you want to go, go ahead. I won't feel bad. Alrighty, so here we go. Uh, you may know me as a painter. This is a show I had at CMCA in 2017. It was a really interesting show, and uh, it was my last show in, um, in Maine. My next show will be in New York, and this is a study for it. It's going to be called, it's going to be called After Midnight, and this is a study I did in 2008, and uh, the whole, uh, this is going to be harder than it looks. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to stand here and look at the pictures. Uh, th so this is what I'm doing for fun, which is making violins. Every violin starts with materials, and from left to right, at the top, which is made of spruce, the back, which is made of maple, the sides, which are made of maple as well, and the neck blank, which is also made of maple. And ideally, they could be all from the same piece of wood. And I just recently built a fiddle where the wood came from Belfast, and it's all out of the same piece of wood. It starts with a mold and six blocks are glued to the mold and then they're shaped in the rough shape of a violin just before the sides are bent. And the sides are bent, they're only a millimeter thick, they're bent on a hot iron, they're moistened slightly, and as you twist the, the piece of wood around this hot iron, it retains the shape. Here's a picture of a mold uh, that is blank and a mold where the rib assembly is complete. I study actually with Jonathan Cooper in Portland and when I go down to Portland to work with him, I actually make his rib sets, so I've done quite a, quite a number of these. The next step is to shape the back and that is done on the bandsaw. Uh, which is basically the same as it's always been done, but the bandsaw used to be a hand-operated tool. So the rough shape is, is cut out after it's, it's traced from the ribs, ribs assembly. <laughs> these are little baby planes. I have ten of these in different shapes and sizes. And together with chisels, this, the shape of a violin is, is carved. Some people think that it is molded somehow. Well, in fact, it's carved. And this is uh, the back progressing to near its final shape. And that little metal piece up there is a scraper, and that's what does the final, the final bits. And on the upper right-hand corner are some templates that just give me an idea if I'm close to where I want to be. The top and the back are basically the same. The obvious difference is the top is a different material which is spruce and it has inside what's called a base bar and this base bar has to be fitted exactly to to the top and this provides the strength for one half of the violin here are here's the violin ready to be assembled glued together basically the thin black line around the outside is an inlay called a purfling and that has to be carved and cut and fitted exactly before the final shaping happens. The violin is then glued together and these are specialty clamps made for, just for the, for the violin. After the, the back is put on, the top will be finished and the top will be glued on separately. You can see the carving tools. Then the neck is the next step, which is begun by 
cutting it out on a bandsaw, just like the back or, or top, and it's just a rough cutting. Then it has to be cut with a handsaw and with chisels until the scroll is, is realized, which is the finished scroll. This is the violin that was uh, made from the wood from a, a tree in Belfast on Pine Street, Wesson Willie Reddick's tree. And I have enough for uh, six violins out of this particular piece of wood. Here is a double exposure of that one violin. It's called In the White, and it is now ready for finishing. Again, the scrapers, all the final bits will be done with the scraper. Here are, here are three fiddles I made this summer, and you can see three different, they're all maple, but the left is bird's eye maple, the middle is curly maple, and the right is a plain maple, which is the tree from Belfast. And this is the, the process is coloring and, and varnishing. The last step is called setup. It's when the pegs, the bridge, the uh, strings, all that are put together uh, to make it actually a, a musical instrument. This is a, called a peg shaper, and it's like, kind of like a pencil sharpener. The bridge, which is what transmits the sound to the violin, comes in a blank, and then it has to be cut and fit exactly to the fiddle before the, before the strings are, are attached. And this is a, a spruce top fiddle. And this is what happens when I get them all done. I hang them up on a rack. <laughs> so that's how to make a t 200 hours of fiddle making in uh, six minutes. <laughs>